local schools board of education organizational meeting this evening january 10th 2022 can we all rise to say the pledge of allegiance Item three is oath of office, Ms. Janet. Yep. Sure. Sure. Okay. I have to work school, so I'm going to keep this That's on. Fine. I did take a test on Friday, and it was negative. <laughs> I'm just going to read the oath, and same with me. I think it would be easier if I read it, and then you can just reply at the very end. Typically, I say a few words, and you read You will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as a member of the Board of Education for the Poland Local School District, Mahoning County, Ohio, to the best of your ability in accordance with the laws now in effect and here and after to be enacted during your continuance in said office until your successor is chosen and qualified. I will. <laughs> Dr. Dinopoulos, do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, that you will faithfully and impartially discharge duties as a member of the Board of Education of the Poland Local School District, Mahoning County, Ohio, to the best of your ability in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office until your successor is chosen and qualified? I do. Okay, item five, election of officers for the Board of Education for calendar year 2022. Doc, can we just do the roll call? Oh, yeah, I'm now sorry. Everyone's yeah, I'm on sorry. board. Yep. Okay. Ms. Colucci? Here. Dr. Dinopoulos? Here. Mrs. Elia? Here. Mr. Polis? Here. Mr. Warren? Here. Thank you. Okay, now we'll open up the floor for nominations for the Office of President and a motion to approve. Do we have any nominations for President? I nominate Troy Polis for President. Okay. Troy, do you accept? I'll accept. Any other nominations? Seeing none, <clears throat> we need a motion to approve or to resolve that the Poem Board of Education approves Troy Polis as president for the calendar year of 2022. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Ms. Colucci. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Elia. Uh, roll call, please, Janet. Dr. Dinopoulos? Yes. Mrs. Elia? Yes. Mr. Polis? I'll abstain. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Colucci? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Polish, you can just start with B okay. on the agenda, okay? All right, thank you. Welcome, Mrs. Lyre. Thank you to outgoing President Mr. Riddle for your service to the board. Item B, the oath of office is to be administered by the treasurer to the newly elected school board president. <clears throat> Do you, Troy Polis, solemnly... I'll read for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to repeat okay. after I'm done, okay? Do you, Troy Pola, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully perform the duties of your office as President of the Board of Education of the Poland Local School District? I do. All 
All right, moving to item C. The floor is now open for a nomination for the vice president of the board. Do I hear any nominations for vice president? I nominate Larry Janopoulos. Dr. Anopoulos, do you accept this nomination? Sure. Okay. I need a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Mrs. Martin, may I have a roll call, please? Ms. Clucci? Yes. Dr. Janopoulos? I'll abstain. Mrs. Elia? Yes. Mr. Polis? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Doc, I'm going to read the oath for Vice President. Do you, Dr. Janopoulos, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully perform the duties of your, as your office as Vice President of the Board of Education of the Poland Local School District? I do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Item 6, additional motions. Motion to readopt existing bylaws and policies for the Poland Local School District. Adopt existing bylaws. A motion is necessary to adopt existing bylaws and policies for the organization and operations of this board and this school district and shall be bound to follow such bylaws and policies. I need a motion, please. I'll make the motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Warren. <clears throat> Mrs. Montim, have a roll call, please. Dr. Donopoulos? Yes. Mrs. Laya? Yes. Mr. Polis? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Colucci? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Item B. Motion to approve Board of Education meeting dates for calendar year 2022. Resolve that the Poland Board of Education work sessions and regular business meetings dates for calendar year 2022 will begin at 6 p.m. in the Dobbins Elementary Building with the understanding that these dates and times are subject to change. Meeting dates are attached and also available on the district website. Can we open that attachment, please. Okay. I need a motion to approve, please. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Dr. Nopoulos. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Colucci. Is there a roll call? Mrs. Martim, have a roll call, please. Mrs. Elia? Yes. Mr. Polis? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Colucci? Yes. Dr. Janopoulos? Yes. <clears throat> Moving to item seven, the consent agenda. Motion to approve consent agenda items listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and will be approved and adopted by a single motion. A motion is necessary to recommend the board to approve the consent agenda as presented. May I have a motion, please? I'll make the motion with the uh, to not reading all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Donopoulos. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Warren. All right. Item A. Authorize that the Poland Board of Education join the school, Ohio School Boards Association for 2022. This is the 67th consecutive year of membership in the OSBA for Poland. The Poland School Board was a charter member of OSBA in 1955. Mr. President, point of order, I was serious. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all right? Can we... I think you're allowed okay. to say we approve A through okay. the other posted. Everybody in the audience A through Z. a copy of it. Right? Everyone, yeah. Huh? <laughs> Mrs. Montim, I have a roll call, please. Okay, so what we're approving is A through Z, and it's been made public, and um, all members of the audience has a copy of the agenda if they choose uh, available to them. Mr. Polis? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Colucci? Yes. Dr. Donopoulos? Yes. Mrs. Elia? Yes. Okay. Last item for the organizational meeting, board committee appointments for 2022. I will start with Dr. Donopoulos. Is there one of these that you would like to be a part of? Uh, I'll stay with the student achievement liaison. Okay. Ms. Colucci? I'll take the legislative liaison. Okay. Mr. Warren. Uh, I'll stay, uh, go with the impartial hearing officer. Okay. And Mrs. Elia. 
I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I'm going to take. I'm, I'm going to ask for a recommendation of where you think it would be best fit. For me to... I will assign you to the liaison to evaluation review committee. The last item. And then I will retain my position as a member of the foundation board. Okay. Okay. We are now going to transition into our regular meeting. <clears throat> the regular board of education meeting of the Poland local schools will be held on Monday, January 10th, immediately following the organizational meeting at 6 p.m. <clears throat> Do we need a roll call? Um, okay. Skip over that. Moving to the next section, public participation. Oh, excuse me. School board rec member recognition. Commendations to board members. Mr. Hawk, may we take this yes. over? Uh, for members of the public that don't know, and everybody, uh, January across the state of Ohio is board member recognition. So we'd like to take a minute to recognize all the board members that are here tonight in their roles, both new and veterans. So I'm going to call you up, and then I got a little, we have a little plaque for you, so um, you're going to get a picture. So. <laughs> and we'll start with uh, Michelle Alaya. Brand new. You haven't, I haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've shown up. So. Really looking forward to working with you, and I know um, all of our administrators are walking on board. I know, that's the fastest. Um, next is um, Mr. President, uh, Troy Paulus. Thank you so much for all the support. Yeah, truly enjoy working with Troy. You know, anytime you call Troy, email Troy, or text Troy, he responds in less than 30 seconds. It's, uh, it's great. We can always reach somebody, all of you too, but uh, mostly Troy. So, and we love having him around. So thank you so much. Uh, next, uh, um, Annie Colucci. Dr. Dinopoulos. Dr. Dinopoulos, how many years is this for you? Twelve. Twelve. That makes you the senior board member of all of the schools. Congratulations. Thanks for all the support. Appreciate it. Got my teeth cleaned today. Thought about Dr. Dinopoulos the whole time. I felt like I was cheating on him. Um, um, Larry Warren.
no participant may speak more than once on the same topic unless all others wish, who wish to speak on that topic have been heard. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. No person may address or question board members individually. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. No person may address or question board members individually. The president, president invites any person wishing to participate to come forward at this time. Mrs. Montine, do we have anybody? We do not. Okay. Would anyone like to speak? Hearing none, moving to the consent agenda. Members of the board, you have before you a copy of the items considered for tonight's consent agenda. Would any board member wish to remove any items to be considered separately? Hearing none, I need a motion. A motion is necessary to approve consent agenda as followed. May I hear a motion, please? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Ms. Colucci. In a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Mrs. Montin, I'll turn the floor over to you. I just have two. I just have two items under uh, treasure request for consent. Number one are to approve the minutes of December thirteenth, twenty twenty one. Okay. And number two is to approve the financial report for December twenty twenty one. A couple things I'd like to point out and then give you also an update on our audit. <clears throat> the cash reconciliation, if you want to go and Andrew, pull that first one up, perfect. Um, cash reconciliation as of December 31st, 2021, all fund totals, uh, total fund balance of $8,821,467.41. On the cash summary report, I've been talking the last couple months as um, switching over this new biennium budget, just so you know, the foundation payments still for the month of December haven't been switched over yet. We're going to expect to see that here in January uh, with those payments. I've been talking about that the last couple months on how we're receiving our funding and what that looks like. But on the cash summary report, a couple other things that I've been talking about the last couple months is how far behind with ESSER, um, how we spend the money, I ask for requests, and then we get those funds back. Uh, those have started coming in, uh, so you'll see that our negative fund balances, if you get over into the ESSER III um, and IDA Title I, anything that's related to fe federal monies, um, at least those are now starting to come in with governor signing uh, necessary documents. So um, all in all, uh, good shape there with, with the timing of those. A uh, couple other things you'll notice um, on um, month-to-date receipts. You know, we did receive final settlement um, for that first half of uh, tax collections in December. Uh, came in a little bit earlier than normal. Um, the next item is the month-to-date uh, expenditure reconciliation. You will notice that we did have three payrolls in December. Very, very busy month, especially at, at year-end, because we had a payroll that hit right on um, 1231 this year, uh, and the totals are listed there for you. And then also it shows all of our checks that were written for the month of December, um, which uh, balances to our month-to-date expenditures for the month, which was just slightly over $2 million. Um, the, app, the appropriation and revenue summaries are informational for you to review. One other item that I did put in, in the packet, it's the last document if you want to pull that up, Andrew. I started presenting these last year. Didn't want to make it too confusing since we hadn't really switched anything over yet, but a couple things I wanted to point out on this monthly report. As you're looking at this data, this is showing you our expenditures basically from July through December, and it's comparing it to where we were last year at the same time. But the other thing that it's doing now that the forecast has been submitted is it's looking at the data basically halfway through the year and it's seeing how close are we trending to what I uh, projected in that five-year forecast. Um, it, it, it shows you on the revenue side, again, like I just mentioned, revenues this year, if you look on page four, 
the gray line, which makes sense because we received collections in December, so it shows that our revenues was more than the prior year. When you get to the ex expenditure side, it basically is breaking out the highest expenditure categories, but, but really at the bottom of page five, what that's showing you is what my forecast estimate was for fiscal 22 and where our cash flow is today. And you'll see that I'm literally off by like just slightly over $9,000. <laughs> so pretty, pretty accurate, um, trending exactly where we thought we would as far as this point of the year goes. And the nice part about this is every month when I close the books, we get a real true picture as we progress to the end of the year on how are we trending compared to the forecast. So um, actually unfavorable, so I'm sorry, the $20 million budget, I'm off by 10,000. <laughs> uh, so at six months through the year, I'm pretty happy with um, the results and the way we're trending. And I will provide this each month now it's, I think it's always better to do it after the forecast has been presented because otherwise the data that you're looking at, it's compared to the prior year forecast. And as we've talked the last few months, with everything as much as things have been changing, it was going to look very, very different and very confusing. So the numbers were going to look really skewed until that forecast was, was presented. So I'll make sure that that's in there for you each month. And just one last thing, um, uh, our audits, all of the audits are going very well right now. Um, kind of with COVID and everything else, as we're dealing with that in our district, my auditors are also dealing with that, so we've had a lot of cancellations. But to update you on that, I think they're nearing completion. With So remember, they're auditing the fiscal 21 data right now. Um, GAP audit went very well. We're in the middle of a Medicaid audit. And um, I was explaining to some people in the office today that um, a lot of extra testing being done due to ESSER funding. And it's been, it's been interesting because remember, we all went into this all brand new, didn't know how any of this was gonna work. Well, they're asking for everything under the sun and knock on wood so far. We've been able to provide all those things. We have all the right documentation. They're pulling stuff. They're checking to make sure that what we in fact spent our ESSER funds on um, were, were legit COVID related eligible expenses. So they're doing that testing now, which is a whole nother layer to what we have never done in the past um, because we never had ESSER funding before. So I just wanted to give you a brief update on where our audits are right now. Thank you, Ms. Montgomery. You're welcome. Mr. I have, I have a question. Yes. Sure. Have we made any progress with the Westminster account? Uh, well, yes and no. So I had that on the radar and thank you for bringing that up. I've reached out to multiple people when I had extra time, I guess I'll say, I tried to look back through board minutes and try to find the exact year that a lot of this stuff started. I called Westminster, I called Star Ohio. I have a file on my desk. I'm trying to figure out the best thing because I'm not coming up with, I know what the scholarship or what the monies were for and who the scholarships were, go to, were to go to, but with no more monies coming in, I think the best thing that's probably going to happen, and I was probably going to wait to our first next work session to ask the board what your wish is, because going forward, I think we would have to have a resolution to have the account closed and then to say, what do we want to do with that money? Do we want to give it to the foundation and let the foundation award those scholarships? But I'm still trying to collect the necessary paperwork and the documentation from prior years in order for you to have what you need to make the best decision of how we want to go forward. So I had kind of been working on it, and then I kind of had to end up putting it, putting it aside again. When was the last time that account was used? A scholarship been mm -hmm. given? Um, I think I had told you, hasn't it been like, I think it's been, it, I don't think any scholarships have been given in over 10 years. Okay. And like I said, all we're doing is really receding about 85 cents to a dollar in interest a month. Um, but, again, the money needs to go towards kids, so we just need to figure out, do you want us to continue to manage that and figure out a way to disperse those funds and get scholarships to kids? Um, or would it be best, and I did talk to Legal about this, the best thing after researching and, and providing you the information is do we want the foundation to award it? 
So I kind of have that on the, the radar for our next work session so the board can make a decision on moving forward. But thank you for reminding me. Any other questions? Mr. Hockenberry, All right. Over to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I just have three quick little items. Uh, item number one is to approve some summer help substitutes, which are custodians and porters. Um, their wages um, are the same from previous. Um, and there are seven people up there. All six are ready to go, and we're waiting on background checks for one. So they're all listed there. Item number two is uh, to approve a volunteer tutoring position uh, at the school. Uh, BCI is on file, and we're working through that. And it's Bella Hoffmaster who's listed there. And item number three is the approval of the sixth grade outdoor educational program at Camp Fitch. Um, I believe this is an annual thing that we do here at Poland, uh, May 18th, 19th, and 20th. Uh, Mr. Um, uh, Puranis has sent everything in correctly and it's approved we'll wait and monitor make sure everything's still a go so those are the three items I have right. any questions hearing none Mrs. Montima have a roll call please Dr. Dinopoulos yes Mrs. Elia yes Mr. Polis yes Mr. Warren yes Ms. Colucci yes, yes. Moving to items not included in the consent agenda, a motion is necessary to authorize and direct the treasurer to approve a one-day compensation for extra assigned duties for COVID-19 related cases during winter break. Kristen Orr, school nurse, and Holly LaFleur, school nurse. Do I hear a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Dr. Danopoulos, and a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Alive. Mrs. Montina, anything hold, you'd like hold to add? On, I have a question. Go ahead, Doctor. We no. had a grant for the uh, for the gal that, that quit. What happened to the? Where are we at with it? What happened to the funds for the? Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Okay. I can do it now if you'd like. Me no, to. no. Okay. Yeah, no, fine. I was, was going to talk about that when we get to uh, item number one on my agenda. Okay, no problem. Good question, though. All right. Any other questions or comments? Right. Mrs. Montina, have a roll call, please. Mrs. Elia? Yes. Mr. Polis? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Colucci? Yes. Dr. Dinopoulos? Yes. All right, item number two. Approve the 2022 Ohio Safety Grant in the amount of $9,386.53. May I have a motion to approve, please? I so move. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Second, please? I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Colucci. Any questions or comments? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, good question. Uh, so the safety grant is uh, awarded to every school that wants to apply for it. Uh, we applied, uh, we have a couple of them that were out there. We actually talked about this a little today. Um, is, this is the one I did, right? <laughs> okay. Attorney yeah, I just want to make sure because I saw Attorney, Attorney General, General up there. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this, uh, you could apply for uh, ideas uh, to enhance the safety of the school. We submitted a few ideas, uh, came up with some. I think in the past we used some things to get some uh, screen print for the schools. So those, the bulldog oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that were on the high school, we used right. the safety grant to pay for those last year. So we were awarded today. It ends up being about $5.50 per kid. I mean, we got the full amount. So we're going to be meeting to discuss some some ideas of what we think would be be best, but we just got approval this right. week. So. And the reason this is on here is we actually, as soon as they approve this, we actually like already got these funds. And actually, you'll notice on my financials, you'll see you know safety grant nine thousand three eighty six because I already had to post that receipt in December before I closed the books. We actually get the money. Uh, we expend the funds and then we're required uh, mr mckenzie and i will do a final expenditure report and provide everything to the high attorney general to show how we spent the funds so this is one that is a little bit different than other types of grants <clears throat> all right thank you mrs Martin. any other questions hearing none may I have a roll call please mr polis yes mr warren yes. <clears throat> miss clucci yes Dr. Dinopoulos? Yes. Mrs. Alaya? Yes. 
<clears throat> Item three, recommend to authorize and direct the treasurer to approve compensation for teachers who teach an additional class period above their instructional periods in lieu of a duty or planning period per attached MOU. May I have a motion to approve, please? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Mrs. Zelaya. Second, please. I'll second it. Thank you, Dr. Donopoulos. Mrs. Montina, anything like you add? This is, a, this is an MOU that was required, so just so everybody is aware, we had already, according to the PA contract, been compensating any teachers who fell in this category of teaching in lieu of a planning or um, instruction, basically an extra, extra period for the year. Uh, it was communicated that old language in the contract for what these employees are doing really wasn't, the compensation level wasn't where we felt it needed to be. Um, so this MOU is addressing that. It goes back to, and I know Andrew had it up there, it goes back to the beginning of the school year, a retro amount, and we're basically making it right for this school year. And then, of course, we'll make sure this new language is incorporated in any contracts going forward. It, Superintendent Hockenberry, anything to add, or did I kind of yeah, cover it? Yeah, you covered it great. Um, teachers were getting paid $25 an hour to teach an entire class um, during their planning bell, so they got no prep time. No lunchtime. It was it was antiquated for sure. It wasn't because it was all year long. They were kind of holding the line for us to start the year. We never knew if the teacher was going to return. We finally found out the teacher will not be returning for up to two years. So we, we put this in place to co uh, adequately compensate them. Um, we were afraid that they may not want to do it at that rate either, which would only impact negatively impact the kids. So compensation was fair. We worked with the union and our attorneys and worked it out. Okay. And because we're just, I hope they're watching, but I was going to reach out to all the teachers involved in, in this um, because we're approving it tonight and we do have payroll this week. We'll make sure all of the compensations and I'll recalculate everything and we'll get all of that loaded this week, literally. So, you know, is it going to be a lump wait. sum for the entire year, or is no. it going to include in the, the MOU? Said that it will be spread out the remaining pays of their contracts. Okay, so I'll, I'll get that information out to them tomorrow and we'll get it moving right away. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Mateen, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Warren, yes, Miss Colucci, yes, Dr. Dinopoulos, yes, Mrs. Elia, yes, Mr. Polis, yes. Item four, recommend to enter into negotiations with the Poland Educator Education Association, PEA, the board and the union have agreed that it is in their mutual interest to opening bargaining for a complete successor agreement in January 2022 per attached <coughs> MOU. May I have a motion to approve, please? I'll make a motion. Thank you, Ms. Colucci. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Elia. Mrs. Montina, anything you'd like to add? Just as MOU says, it basically says that we both agree that we're going to start negotiations. <laughs> All right. Any questions from board members? Hearing none, may I have a roll call, please? Ms. Clucci? Yes. Dr. Donopoulos? Yes. Mrs. Elia? Yes. Mr. Polis? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. All right. Moving to the superintendent's request and recommendations, not included in the consent agenda. Item one, recommend to approve ex extended time for contact tracing after hours at an hourly rate for the following to be paid out of MCPH COVID contact tracing funding grant. Kevin Snyder, principal at Poland Seminary High School. Michael Daly, assistant principal at Poland Seminary High School. David Purins, principal at Poland Middle School. And Jennifer Pint, principal at McKinley Elementary. Do I hear a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Dr. Donopoulos, and a second. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Mr. Hockenberry? Yeah, this, uh, to answer your question, uh, Mrs. Fedor was originally in that role to d handle all the contact tracing, all the calls, all the emails, and everything regarding and report to the health department all the needs of the uh, COVID-19, all the reporting. Uh, she re um, decided she was no longer going to be in that role anymore and resign that position. We have to continue to do this um, 
So we're asking our principals to do this on the weekends and in the evenings at their hourly rate. Um, about seven other districts have decided to do the exact same thing. Principals know their kids the most. They have great quick access to them instead of hiring another person, which we probably wouldn't be able to find. So uh, they'll have to log their hours and turn it in like a timesheet. Um, so we'll see. We're trying to streamline it to help them as well, but it's just becoming overwhelming with the, uh, of course, the Omicron variant and all that coming in. So, uh, and then to answer your question on the grant part is what I will do then is what Mrs. Fiodor has already done, what we're paying these nurses for that over break and this. I track all of that. And then part of the requirements are is I have to submit basically invoices to get reimbursed for anything which is towards the grant. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Monteen, may I have a roll call, please? Dr. Dinopoulos? Yes. Mrs. Alaya? Yes. Mr. Polis? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Colucci? Yes. All right. Informational items. All county school board meetings on Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. Reservations are due January 18th, 2022. So I have um, basically the sheet that we need to give back to the ESC. I believe Mrs. Alaya has already RSVP to Darlene. So just a reminder to the other board members, um, it looks like they're still planning, Mr. Hockenberry, do you know have to have this in person? Yes. Um, so if any other board members are planning on attending, could you make sure you let myself or Darlene know so we can get this submitted um, to the ESC before the 18th, okay? You can put me down too. Okay, actually if you know, I'll just put you down right now. You can mark me down too. Annie, you good on that day? And then Mr. Polis, you said? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay. Mr. Warren? And, okay, very good. That's perfect. Perfect, thank you. We'll get that sent in. All right, reports and presentations. I will move quickly through my foundation report. Unfortunately, the foundation has decided to postpone our banquet that was planned for February due to the Omicron variant. We would like to have it in the future date, but the executive committee has decided to postpone at this time. That concludes my foundation report. Um, I do not believe we have a legislative report at this time. Dr. Donopoulos, do you have a student achievement? President, there are just a couple of things on the legislative. Go right ahead, Mr. Warren. Uh, <clears throat> many, many of you know that uh, uh, there are 100 school districts now suing uh, the state of Ohio. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Uh, it, it involves the constitutionality of uh, using public money for private funds. Uh, at least that's the allegation in the suit. So uh, that will move at the, the normal pace of legal kinds of proceedings. But it'll something to keep an eye on. Uh, another is uh, House Bill 126. Uh, that has passed the Senate. The House will vote on that uh, when they reconvene uh, on the 19th of January. And, and that deals with the ability of school districts to uh, file uh, a, pro a property tax complaint when it comes to uh, <clears throat> restating uh, or <coughs> recalculating the value of commercial property. And there's been a lot in the media about that. Uh, statewide, so it'll be something to keep an eye on. Uh, but again, that's that's passed the Senate. Uh, it will be considered by the House next week when they reconvene. Right. Thank you for that report, Mr. Warren. I apologize. I did not know you had one. Dr. Donopoulos, did you have a student achievement? I don't have a report for this week. Okay. Thank you, sir. Last hmm. announcements. The Next scheduled work session will be held on February 14th, 2022 at the Dobbins, Dobbins Learning Center boardroom at 6 p.m. The next scheduled regular session will be held on February 28th, 2022, as well as at the Dobbins Learning Center in the boardroom. The Board of Education picture will be taken on Monday, February 14th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. during our work session. Last item, a motion is necessary to recommend entering into the executive session to consider the sale of real or personal property by competitive bid or the sale or disposition of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit property under RC 505.10 if disclosure of the information would result in a competitive advantage to the person whose personal private interest is adverse to the general public interest. 
and to consider the appointment, employment, and dismissal of a public employee or official. So I hear a motion to enter into executive session. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Ms. Colucci, and a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Dr. Nopolis. Would all board members signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 Okay. This meeting is concluded. Thank you. <laughs>